kind of get us to the point where when we start talking about what is happening in this show, we know what experimentation kind of led to this um, body of work. Okay. Um, I never worked on canvas. So this work is really coming out of uh, performance and um, sort of a, a long exploration of pushing the edges of drawing. You know, what what is a drawing? I said with David Kelly at Museum School and uh, you know, he really turned my head around about what does it have to involve paper, does it have to involve graphite, does, can it be paint, can it be flat, can it be round? And um, so I got involved in doing uh, uh, performance, making drawing with flour, and then turning that into an installation, and then it was an interactive installation. So I've been looking at a lot about drawing and how it relates to the body and performance for a while. And about two and a half years ago, uh, we had just moved to a new house and we had a lot of paint around. And at the same time, I had just gotten a studio, a real studio for the first time, really committed to a studio. And um, I had a series of very simple pencil drawings that um, were um, just line drawings and, and had a, they had a really sort of uh, meandering quality to the line. And I, I had an idea that I wanted to take these drawings and sort of make make the shapes um, round, three-dimensional, large, sort of work with the scale. So the first step I took was to um, uh, cut them out of plywood. You you know you were talking about cutting plywood shapes out. Chris has ended up making a, yeah, a right. way to, to kind. Of, I mean, he isn't you know when when he's taking these things apart, you see that plywood actually removed like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, it's interesting to see that you both kind of went through this stage of cutting things. It led you to a very different place than it led Chris. Actually, and he keeps his in the wall, which yeah. again, it keeps that edge from being too important. That's right. And actually, uh, you're reminding me that some of the drawings I was doing at the time, trying to figure out how to integrate the plywood with the wall, some of the drawings that, that I was doing were about having this drawing that was part of the wall, and then these plywood pieces came out of the wall. So it's very related. Especially to what ended up happening. Yes, yeah, um, I hadn't even realized that. Even more. So, so it's been very exciting working with Chris because, you know, I couldn't, the collaboration couldn't have a flat wall because he messes it up. You know? <laughs> yeah, so push that issue. So. I originally talked to you and you did a lot of the drawings that, that you, were, when you were planning this out. You know, that's still that idea that you talked about with the plywood of, you know, turning a corner was really interested to you, like you know, what you're doing in that room and kind of spreading out the change from having to make it on the floor to seeing it on the wall. But this is like, this seems to be like we're swimming through these pieces. It really, instead of it being a shape that turns a corner, it's, right. it's kind of hard to figure out. You know, it, it seems to have more drawing quality uh, because of the line of art. Mm -hmm. the, the streaming sounds piece, it's very satisfying to see it up, but it's um, pretty frustrating to try to put it up. And very rigid in terms of it has to be within a quarter of an inch. Yeah, you long. used a template for that yeah. one. This one you didn't. And so I thought, well, that's okay, but but I was interested in um, creating this sort of giant color form set that could, could be <laughs> reconfigured for different spaces. Just sort of like, a, it's like a drawing tool. So I set this up in my studio, but it didn't look, I mean, some of the rules are the same, that these red and blue forms are all horizontal, but you know, was to, this was configured for this space. So, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying. This is the first time I've seen it, you know, really finished. So, um, it still seems very flat to me, though. So, I have to figure out how to. I like the way it moves through the space. I like conceptually, it's very interesting to me that it, t it dominates this space visually, and yet when the show's over, it's, it collapses into this small thing. So, that little bit of distance that something has to have to pass behind something else. You know, that seemed to be, you know, you seem to be particularly interested in figuring out how to do that. Whereas mm -hmm. when there were those more organic kind of foam cell shapes, mm -hmm. it was how far away they were, or sometimes they would start to be dimensional, mm -hmm. uh, which was more of a sculptural thing, it's, mm -hmm. it felt like. And this is kind of getting into a line and color. And it's, it's, it's interesting, it's following some very, Traditional investigation, you 
other kind of paths, but it's the, the, the end result is a lot more interesting. Now, the, one of the things that Nancy was particular about in this, along with, you know, there were some things that could be a couple of inches off, but the bottom edge, like where these things ended up, when we talked about this coming into the space, there was, um, there was like, oh, I don't know if it can work with the little gap at the bottom. It's like this corner, it has to, the edges and the corners and the, that little gap were a concern. And, you know, so it, it is about to, you know, making that transition. Yeah. And, you know, why, do you have that feeling for, what is it that was, that was, would make work and what it wouldn't make work? Yeah, I guess just to, to would it would it would it be have this seamless kind of feeling that the um, floor in my studio was painted the same color as the brick, so I didn't know how the brick would work. You know, it, I think it works just fine. Um, I guess one thing that I really like about this piece, I noticed at Open Studios when people came in, instead of immediately asking about the material, how do you do it, what's the stuff, they were just like, ooh, I'm in it. I'm like, it feels like this, and they're they're. Um, they were having a physical experience first, and then they go, like, well, what the heck is this? They have to tell But that came later, so that I like a lot. And you had said that, you know, your things going off the edge and shooting up into the ceiling was a different way of working than Chris, as far as, like, kind of, some of his paintings and things will touch an edge, but it seems to be about the space that it's inhabiting. In fact, it might have been more a little bit, but, you know, you were saying that was one of the things you thought was going to be challenging to resolve. Well, yes. Yeah. So, um, if it gets too close to an edge, it'll, it'll sort of highlight the edge and highlight the surface too much. Um, but there's also a part that just, it just, it just, I just like it sort of swimming out the middle and just sort of have a quiet around it. I can't really explain that aspect of it too well. Did your installations, I mean, I think Nancy did some performance and some installation and some things, and I, I wanted to go back to the chronology of how you kind of came to design holes in the wall. Um, versus other ways you worked? Well, sort of a, a long, sort of step-by-step -step thing. Wait, I mean, when I was, I remember, I think I can all trace it back to this, this point in, when I was an undergrad, when I was like right in the class between, when I was figuring out what I wanted to paint, I was doing all the things. And I was right in the class between um, realism and abstraction. I was really, um, I didn't want to get into abstraction until I, I knew that I had to go there. So I had just taken this trip. I did a semester in Rome, um, which totally blew my mind. And uh, I did this body of work there with the thing that most that was most um, exciting to me about Rome was how not just how old the place is, which is what strikes everyone, but how there are these old buildings and old streets that seem like they've been there before. Humans almost they just seem so solid. And then there are all these brand new shiny cars and Vespas streaming through them like blood. And to me, it seemed like a like a, there's this place and then there are these things and old and new and they, they, they move so well through these structures and these environments but also at the same time they seem to be so different. And, and, and I didn't really understand that at the time but I got back to Seattle and finished my, finishing up school and all this stuff was in my mind really sort of clogging it up and I was taking this drawing class with uh, one of my favorite professors back there and I just kept drawing cars and trucks all the time. He thought it was crazy. <laughs> and, um, so he, he, he told me to make a three-dimensional model of what I was trying to figure out. And I was like, whoa. And I went, that's when I popped into abstraction, was at this three-dimensional model stage where they still sat on the wall. Like, you still had to address the front on. It was this two-dimensional plane thing that I was going with. Um, but going into the three dimensions was like, it was so much easier to understand things. And then right after that, I just like I sped into abstract painting. So whenever I get frustrated with painting, I call myself a painter. But whenever I get really frustrated with painting, I'll go back to three dimensions because it's I just understand things better, and it's just also it's just different. I think the sort of pendulum swing between two D and three D is what sort of gives me my power, my energy. So if I go back and forth, it keeps both of them strong. So this thing came about after a frustrating time in a grad school at Mass Art where my paintings didn't look like this at all. They're actually really sort of, they kind of look like um, minimal abstract geometric things. And I was going back to, like trying to figure out, I guess back to the Rome thing or life, you know, where there's old stuff that exists and new stuff comes along. And then how over time do they just sort of become one? So they're still separate, but they're also the same. 
So those things I felt weren't working, so I was having trouble again, so I did more three-dimensional three stuff. And um, was making these little constructions that I'd stick to the wall, but then they were all colorful, but then I'd paint them white. And I didn't know why, I just kept painting them all white. And I think it was because I wanted them to sink into the wall more. Like I wanted them not to just sit on the wall, I wanted them to go in in sort of like a, a two-dimensional way, even though they're three-dimensional objects. It's a little confusing and paranoid time, but um, <laughs> I did a large installation, um, kind of, which kind of relates to all, it relates to my paintings, the drawing, and the collaboration. Where I did this, I took a corner of a room and, and just made a huge collage and kind of threw it in the corner with carpeting and aluminum and poured paint and everything, just to try and get this these objects like stuck into the wall, like pushed in, so that it became more like a painting. And I don't know if I was totally successful, but then it led to working directly on the wall. And I was drawing it for that, drawing and erasing and drawing and erasing, because I was after this sort of history, but also a space, a two-dimensional space. And then I just, I don't really know where the idea did. It's a cut came. I just, I was going to do a wall drawing, and I said, when I had three-dimensional, then I could cut it. And it turned out to be a really good, also at that time, another professor was talking to me about transformation. He just asked me one day, he said, what do you think about transformation? Who is that? Jim came around. And I was like, he left the studio and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> And he explained a few things, like how in, in a part of a painting, some of the paintings that he was looking at, that looked kind of similar to this, how how maybe a part could, he, he was really excited about how parts could um, be a, a thing, but it could also be a space, or how parts like the blue could come in here. And this can sort of assert itself as a, as a shape as well as a space. And so he was talking about that thing, that, that wonderful thing that happens in art where things can be two things at once. So I was constantly thinking about that and trying to put that in everything. And when I got into the wall cut drawing, I was excited because it sort of happened. I didn't even have to push it in there. So three dimensional, two dimensional, and the cuts make space, but they're also line, and the erasers make history, but they also make space. So I, kept, I keep doing it because they, they're like a perfect solution to all these things that I'm trying to put together that are sort of opposites but also work together. So. Um, but it, you know, you use much more color in your paintings that are being added. The wall cuts stay relatively monochromatic. It's, it's, um, I have think you I, considered or tried color in these? Or? Uh, I've been thinking about it. I like how, to me, it relates a little bit more. I think we're so... I, I, I expect white walls when I go into the gallery. So to make this part of the white wall, it makes it more part of the gallery. Too. And you know, it, it certainly doesn't mean you wanting color in these. I just was curious. If, yeah. It seems like you'd have to make the whole wall another color. Yeah, exactly. Because it's playing that thing with the wall. I'll probably go there. But did the um, movement into working with Nancy in the front, that, um, Whose idea was it to change the color of the wall? Where did Nancy go? That was mine. <laughs> that was yours? <laughs> See? <laughs> I kept complaining about it. It seemed too white. It seemed weird. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It seemed too white. Too white. Was that because of the introduction of some of the colored elements that Nancy put in there? Or just like I think so. Huh. I think the colored elements, then it's separated them more. The colored mm -hmm. elements seem to be, I don't know, after this real integration, like a thing that tramp that, a thing that, like a form that um, sort of evolves over time with its environment. So after a while, like things are wrong, they look, just look like they've been there together the whole time, even though they weren't. And so when we started putting colored elements on the white wall, it seemed to separate it for me. Like just the, the colored elements were stuck on the white wall. So I think, in retrospect, that's why I wanted to get rid of some of the white, or to play with some of the colors so that it wasn't this surface with things on top. It was more like this. In your statement in the beginning, it says you, you do no preliminary sketches. So what goes through your mind when you're cutting this wall and you know there's not another piece of paper or another canvas to do over, at least not without a big problem? Well, I draw for a while. I draw and erase and draw and erase for a while. And that's when On I get, wall. Yeah. When I get to a place where I feel um, comfortable that a lot of the stuff will be permanent and I start cutting. So the blade never comes over. No. <laughs> This is one of the walls, just like this shape of this wall is why this this piece happened here. The front wall was like too wide of a yeah. rectangle and that kind of you know, finding the 
find a place for these pieces to live was the only curatorial activity that I had. You know, it was like before anything had happened, we kind of made some decisions, and then I was like, well, I guess I'll work in the back room. You know, it was so different for me. You know, I got to decide what the order of those four paintings were. <laughs> yeah. Great, but you know, it's, so as I was like, you know, I come back and go, so do you guys need any water? <laughs> it's so different from being in here and going, oh, I really think you should look at it this way, or oh, let's look at this nice discovery. You know, you're dancing them around, and you play the domino effect, you move one thing, and then they all move. Sorry, folks, none of these were going to, you know, thank goodness they didn't need to be moved. <laughs> so didn't Chris's like this? Big, a general That's looping easy. shape fight with the three dimensional gloves for a couple of days. Is yeah, that, that was, that was the it? first, my first. Is that time. you figuring out what a big, long rectangular wall that you didn't want to work on? Probably. How, <laughs> Does how, it seem like you stretch? How a graphite line would hold up to being viewed from across the street, actually. And it's sort of, I think it was, it was like a scouting mission to just sort of draw the length of the wall and then come back and draw. But that sort of became, unintentionally became like a good, um, a good anchor or a good, um, you know, something that's, you know, to put the first tent stake in the ground or something. And then we're, I mean, it's kind of a boring shape, but it ended up being a beginning of a framework, I think. And we just started pouring a bunch of paint. And, uh, and we're like, well, now it's dry. Let's slap it on the wall and see what it looks like. When did that color happen? Because I know you did that drawing on a white wall, right? Your this drawing? drawing? Yeah. What, oh, yeah. You it painted came over off. that drawing and kept it and showed through the paint or something? Um, the paint came after this after this blue, this sort of turquoise blue paint, or this teal. And uh, maybe after the red as well. And then we were working on these, Nancy put these great sort of swimmers in here. And that's when it became. I mean, I, I couldn't name it at the time, but I, I kept mumbling under my breath about the white wall. It seemed, it seemed so much like things were stuck on top of it. I wanted more integration. We both wanted more integration. It was just, it wasn't off the ground yet, so. I think it might have been Saturday night work, you know, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a certain, we finally got to a point where we just sort of let it all go. And sort of inhibitions were gone. and. Uh, um, we were tired enough so that the right, the correct part of our brain was taking control, and um, so we just kept trying stuff. And as soon as we painted the wall, I think it looked a lot better. It seemed like we, but it still looked like there was too much of an edge. Then you started complaining about the edge between that color and the white. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, let's make a half and half color and put some spots in. <laughs> and then like it started to work, and then there's like more started to register spatially. And we just, at that point, we almost we talked very little and. Just sort of, what about this? Uh huh. What about this? Uh huh. What about that now? And then we just started putting things in and taking things out and, and um, trying to make it. I think you added a, light, a nice sort of dynamic spread out open openness to it. And um, I was all about integrating and integrating. So they sort of combined. And then we started getting crazy. And I think it was your idea actually to cut this out and pop it out. Why don't we cut that? I think she'd been spying my jigsaw for days. <laughs> and uh, so she cut that. And um, I don't remember if that came before this piece, but before we even started working in the gallery, she was experimenting with these, these, this, this brick mortar stuff. I don't know if you want to talk about that. I don't know. Well, originally I had do. proposed to James to do a room size piece pouring the whole floor in the other room. And, and lifting it up and um, attaching it to the wall so that basically the, the drawing of the brick becomes this fabric that drapes down onto the floor. And then when we figured out the configuration of the pieces, there was no room for that. And I actually wasn't too sure if I could do it technically and didn't have enough time to figure that out. So when I got here, I thought, oh, you know, we had this two weeks. I had more time because I wasn't working so I could come in during the day. and. So it was like, well, I'm here. The bricks are here. James doesn't care about the floor. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so, the same things, you know, to get everybody. So, I mean, he really said, this is the place. Just do whatever you need to do, which was amazing. And so, 
So I, you know, this was the tenant. I said, no, Chris, we don't have to use this in the collaborative piece, but I just need to get this out of my system. Okay? Sure. He's like, fine. Everything was a yes. Everything. That's I, one thing I think made the collaboration really successful, that there was um, a certain forward motion that was never stopped by. Sorry, I don't like that. I have a problem with that. It was just put it up there. We'll rip it off. <laughs> so I went ahead and sort of poured this just to, I thought, well, I'll just, I poured a bunch of them around the gallery. I thought, I'll just take it back to my studio and someday they will, you know. And then, uh, and then we had we had, had a conversation about edges because most of Chris's wall drawings have this sort of form like the one that floats in the middle. So actually, you had started this with this big form floating in the middle, which um, we talked about can we just like turtle it off. It'll have more dynamic, and and then I, I kind of teased him about, are you going to let me go to the edge, or do we have to have this floating? So it was actually he was the one who said, you know, let's just. I had I had actually been thinking about about this piece. It's poured all the way around the corner, so apart from this, that, that this would both sides would come up and attach to the wall, and the brick would kind of drape off around and, t and talk about this um, part of the architecture, and then just become part of the room. Again. So, Chris knew I was thinking about this draping thing, but I had been imagining that the bricks would remain looking like bricks, and he said, wait a minute, you know, this thing stretches, we can just pull it up here and make it look whatever we want. <laughs> so, that's, you know, so it was very collaborative, you know, I'm on one track and he's on his track. So what do you what do you get from that? I mean, do you end up with with ideas for things that will make you work differently in the future? I cannot possibly work in the same way again. Yeah, no. and actually working with someone who's I have been working as a graphic designer for years, so there's I try to avoid it, but you have the sensibility of like doing things right or neat or, or a certain level of control. And Chris is just like, you know, just get it out there. And, you know, I'd be like, put these up here like this, and he'd be like slapping on. <laughs> and, I, and I'd be like, well, I can do that too. So it, was really, it was really liberating. Like, oh, I don't have to do things the way I do them. I can kind of do it like this other person's doing it. And, and then you start, it starts to get inside you, and you start to translate that to other aspects of the way you're drawing or whatever. So mm -hmm. What do you feel about that, Chris? I mean, um, well, I want to go out and buy a bunch of cans of paint from Home Depot now. <laughs> and um, there's just, I mean, this is, you know, I can put my name on this work with hers, but this is like, this is like, has the most sort of upward energy and open feeling of, of, of anything I've done. I think it's just like, it's all twisted and things are flying off. And, and it's like, I think sometimes when, when I, uh, when I'm not on the ball, or I'm just so obsessed about something in my paintings or my drawings that they just sort of get sort of, they get kind of blocky and clunky and heavy. And, and to work with Nancy on this was just like, it was like, like all this upward energy. And just open up. And so I, I want that part of the work in the future. A little bit more of a, you know, a spontaneity or more of like a splash or a twist or something like that. It's really refreshing. How do you guys mix colors as a team? I mean, did you just kind of come up with that this big background? This was the Iron Chef version of <laughs> 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 Let's paint the wall. What colors did you bring? <laughs> we had certain, whatever paint I had in my studio, I, I brought. And so um, the great thing about the, the time constraint was that there was no preciousness about what does the red mean? Or, you know, it was more, it was a very, just very visual. You know, what, what would look good here? One wonderful discovery for me is I, I the way I've worked is to pour the paint, and there's, as they talked about, the paint has a certain movement, which is really important to the work. But then once it dries, that's, that's I just accept that that's what it's going to look like. And since we didn't have the issue of um, this has to be able to be removed, we could just attach it right to the wall, and also we had to pour it pretty thinly so it would dry quickly. That was actually a nightmare <laughs> trying to get these things off the plastic and then they would just like, oh, yeah. fall into themselves. <laughs> so we came up with our own professional method of removing poured yeah. paint from plastic. But once you get it up on the wall, then there's more drawing in it. Like with these, the, the original drawing didn't look like this, but it's like, oh, I'd really like this shape to come down here. So just pull it and this, you know, and you could, you could just, that is really exciting. 
that there's the initial drawing, but then there's the sort of working with it, you know. Yeah, you know, gravity. When you get the, especially like the purple one or the big, these, they just fall and stretch like spaghetti. You're like trying to draw with spaghetti and stick it up. The <laughs> and then all this, all this uh, gel medium was like drying on my hands. She's like, you should use gloves. I'm like, blah. And all this gel medium was drying on my hands. It looked like I was in some terrible burn accident. <laughs> so it was, they changed. It was sort of flopping all over the place. Anybody else have questions? This is a Part of the fun of this is you being able to ask that one. Yeah, I, a really important part of the collaboration that was sort of the, um, the foundation of it all was that when we met with James, um, well, James is the one who put us together and made a mojo, so he had some idea that it would work. But he uh, said, here's this huge wall in front of my gallery. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'd really like you to push it as much as possible. I'd like you, I, I'd be much happier if you were totally anxious and agitated two days before the opening than if you were like, yeah, isn't it nice? Does it look good? You know, he just really invited us to, um, to, to push the experience as much as possible and not worry about the, that the final outcome would be really great. Good for the opening. It's been interesting to hear you guys talk, too, because it feels like there was a, a lack, a real lack of, of ego that came in that was here that you're secure enough in your own works or something because I was just thinking about um, I read, read an article about like um, drawing marathons down at the studio school you know where those exercises where you work for an hour and then you rotate positions and someone else works on your drawing and you come back to your drawing wondering why like someone messed up but you know the perfectly good hip that you had when <laughs> so, you know, like, like, the question as to like whether you know that I was sort of thinking, and I'm like, why am I getting into the psychology of it? But I think so, it's so curious that, you know, I don't, and I don't know whether, too, like, you're just both being very, like, very generous with each other, too, and not, if you ever came in and be like, he cut that out, you know, like, on the next day, like, we were like, why? They, but it seemed like if there was that, then the next step was to go, oh, what am I going to do with it or something, you know, and, and, and that it was this just forward, forward motion. Or did that come in, or was it, it seemed like you were both well, incredibly open, like... I'm, I'm well, in relation saying. to that drawing project that you're talking about, uh -huh. I mean, this is neutral territory, neither of us really started it, so that might have helped. Right. Um, also, I think James picked us pretty well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, um, Nancy just has such a good demeanor, she's just like so... It's really me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the whole reason it worked she is. <laughs> She's she just like, I don't know, I think, I think both of us sort of had a blind faith um, and just sort of keep going. And there were points when, when something didn't look that good. And um, our attitude was just, just like, keep going because even if something in there looks horrible now, it might cause something else to happen, even if you remove the first thing. Mm -hmm its result will still be there. Or later on, what you did at the beginning will make more sense, which happened a few times. With these things, they looked really ridiculous because the kind of marks were so different from everything else. So when you went outside, all you could do was see these annoying things going through the drawing. And since I made them, of course, I was the one who loathed them. <laughs> and Chris was like, no, keep them there. Just let's wait. So, you know, and they ended up it sounds like there was just really no going back, like literally, um, in your attitude. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like when you're trapped on an island or on a boat with another person, you can work with them or work against them, right? <laughs> so, the choice seems obvious, but it was a joy for me. Well, the only, I, I'll add to that, I mean, I wanted, the way I thought you guys could get to really having, and you know, experimenting and playing with this was if you were very, you know, you kind of had pieces that you were comfortable with and you made, you know, that you, you knew you can pull off and you can make happen over here. That gave you the confidence to kind of, I've got that thing in case mm -hmm. this goes wrong. And that's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. It was like, well, if I set them up to have something they feel good about in one half of the space, they have an opportunity, like, how bad could it look as long as this piece is still here on the other side? So that was kind of what I, because I certainly, it wasn't my idea for you to make a piece together. Um, it was my idea for you to figure out together who should be on the front wall. And one of the suggestions for that was that you're both on the front wall. But it, I mean, I would love to take credit for this 
<laughs> on here, but I mean, I'm, I, this, the last thing I do is like, you know, I think people, you know, I pick both of you for your individual work. I wasn't saying, ooh, they could work together, then it would make something more interesting than either one of them, or that they would both learn from. I mean, I, I think it's, I like putting people together and having them meet each other and get interested in each other's work, and I know you get better feedback from the other artists in your show than you do from the nice visitor being polite in your studio, but um, this this is a nice little happy accident. I mean, I'm glad we could kind of set it up and I mean, get, letting you guys have keys and be here whenever you wanted to be gives you the time to do that, but other than that, it's just that's that was really something you guys made happen. I want you to get all the credit for it because that was it's unusual. I mean, Mike Beatty and um, Mick Beatty and Mike Mike Newby had done a piece where they they sent a part that they had made to the other one, and they would add something onto it—a sculptural version of that progressive drawing. And um, it sounded like what you started doing with the note writing, with one person leaving something and saying, "What do you think of this?" And then the other person would work independent, not knowing what they had intended. You know that part—the logical first step that you guys made. But this is really pretty spectacular, um, and I think it's hard to to share your tools and show your secrets and kind of be uh, uh, you know working out on something at the same time while you're developing it. It's, you know, it's hard enough just to complete something that you've already figured out with somebody else. Say no, you need to paint it a little thicker. Yeah. So that's it's really great, and the, I think it feels really as open as the process was. I think you're right about the confidence of having the work on the other side. Like I put the Screaming Cells piece up, you know, well before any of this. Um, so that did help me come back. Like, well, I do have two pieces here, you know. But actually, um, after we were rounding the curve on this piece, we had a really strong urge to go in there and rip that work off the wall and make something else. <laughs> Try to see, now what is it going to look like if I make something after this? Because that work feels very foreign to me now. Like, who made that? Why did you do it so neatly? <laughs> so, you can blame Chris that's for that. a really exciting feeling. You know, it's kind of scary because I don't know what I'm going to do when I go back to my studio. But it feels like um, it feels like this has been like a mini MFA. And it's just like, well, you're at all. Yeah, it's not like a vacation or a residency or something. There's only, there's only kind of weekend residencies <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. and there's air conditioning. <laughs> it was intense and I felt like t I lost touch with everything else in the world, you know? I wonder about this, um, you know, you've spoken about this side giving you confidence. I wonder about this side and what that played into the collaboration or how it influenced how you work in this space. The, the fact that people were going by constantly looking at what you were doing. Yeah, how was it being open studio? the fishbowl? <laughs> I think it, I don't know how you felt about it, but it's kind of nerve-wracking when people are watching you, but I think it takes this much sort of confidence to work by yourself and this much to work in front of people. So because we're in front of people, this part was easy. Like, to work on this together, I think that that added, like, another element that sort of, I don't know, pushed us in a good way. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. But we're also, it was interesting to step back from this, because we'd step back to here. And we'd step back to there, and we'd look, you know, it was like, we had to, we had to compose it um, from inside right here, and then outside in daylight, and outside in, at night. So, but I don't know, it was fun having, it was fun being here. People would stop by and ask a lot of questions, give a lot of advice. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, they kept telling us to paint it all, like, oh, the white should be painted out. And uh, then, then, you know, I saw, him, I saw him a few days before, and he was just standing up here like with a green hat on and dressed up in like a coat. It was like 99 degrees out, just like scowling in the window. And I know that guy. Then he started talking <laughs> through the door over here, and then finally it came out. He was a I think for me, um, since I had more time to come during the day, I needed to like come and inhabit the space and bring my yogurt and my teapot. And daughters. <laughs> yeah, daughters. <laughs> and, you know, I was doing this physical therapy thing, so I'd be, like, doing my thing and whatever I had to do. Just kind of getting used to, kind of getting used to the fact that there's this kind of water flowing past, and it, it became sort of, yeah, faces would pop up, but at some point it had to kind of recede. It's just like this flow of, you know, uh, going by just to get over. I think I was, I felt more inhibited about because your work, you, you draw in, in spaces and you, know, you have to 
make it, I, I'm not used to going to space and sort of performing to make my work. So it was, but I loved getting the reaction. I thought, wow, every artist should have this experience. So if you ever had a question about whether it was worthwhile to make art, it's like every kind of person would stop. And, you know, just really filled with delight and curiosity. And um, so it was very affirming as a artist. It was nice to feel like we were showing them more. Mm -hmm. like, it, that's giving sure. more. Usually that's the big secret, you know, and I, we use that technique just putting a show up. We don't paper over the windows and put yeah. the little, you know, we've always thought that it was like, look, let's show them how hard it is to make this. So they quit thinking we're the freeloader loafer American <laughs> artists with yeah. a trust fund, you know, right. uh, and, and they see that, oh, they're there at two o'clock in the morning and I'm on the way home at two o'clock in the morning. Look, they're yelling at each other. Look, he's <laughs> having a mop. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, uh, and this was to another level, usually it's not the making of the artwork, it's the laying out or installing or um, sometimes it's, you know, a, a sculptural, re you know, you'll have it in two or three different positions before the final thing and I think that does um, involve the audience. They're like, oh, I like the second to the last way they had it, you know, <laughs> but it, it's interesting and this um, space has kind of a unique ground floor view kind of did that by default. It's too hard to hide in this space. <laughs> That's a great part of it. Yeah. But anyway, so if anybody else has any questions, you're going to hang around for a little while and, and answer them. But I think um, I'll let you guys off the hook. And thanks a lot for letting us know what happened.